Hey there, I'm Conor de Languizar, and today I'm in Lviv in Ukraine with Steve Kaufman, also known as Lingo Steve on my yes. YouTube channel. So, Steve and I, we did uh, some videos together back in September, I think it was, in Vancouver in Steve's office where he's based in Canada. And we've both had this uh, particular interest in Ukraine and in the Ukrainian language over the last, I guess, year or so, maybe a little yeah, bit longer. Longer in my case, yeah. And I've been coming regularly to Ukraine, of course, over the last few years. What particular benefit have you gotten from learning Ukrainian in particular? How has oh. that enhanced the trip? Okay, like I was thinking about it the other day, and, and you know, you talk about three dimension, four dimension, okay? So there are dimensions to travel. There's the colors, the sites, the historical monuments, right? There's the food, there's the different uh, cultural aspects. The language is, call it the fourth dimension. If you have the language, the experience is much, much more enjoyable. You understand more things. First of all, I'm with my wife, she can't read the writing. And if you're in a place where there's a bunch of writing and you can't read it, it's less friendly. It's, it's, I've, been, I've been to Finland, for example, I can't read Finnish. It's less comfortable. Here, I can read it. It's very comfortable. And I never feel that I would be, I might be put into a situation where I won't know what's going on. Yeah. So it, it's, it's just a level of comfort. It's, it, it makes it much, much richer, the experience. I agree entirely. Before uh, I came to Lviv to learn Ukrainian, of course, in Ukraine, I see the language written. That's a very pertinent point. And I'd always been a little bit apprehensive about it because I don't understand it. And then it's almost a little bit annoying because it makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, what does that mean? And just even learning the basics of the language just made it so much more relaxing. Now I read Ukrainian, I say, okay, I probably figure it out. Um, and it feels a lot more familiar. And in the last few days, I was in Chernosi, right. uh, Chernosi in the... I were there, was there yeah. too, beautiful town. Yeah. yeah, also very nice. And which is near the Romanian border. Right. And even traveling on the train, every, every, everybody spoke to me Ukrainian, but it was completely relaxed. It doesn't mean I understood everything, right. but I was able, I had that level of communication that made traveling a lot more enjoyable, less stressful. One thing I wanted to add too is, you had Russian, yeah. so it's, it's sort of easier to pick up Ukrainian. But I very much believe that you have to put that effort into learning the language to some level before you go to the country. Because if you arrive like cold turkey and hope that you're going to pick up the language, it has, it has been my experience that that doesn't work. You yeah. actually have to put a fair amount of effort. I had the experience in Vietnam. I spent some effort, put some effort into learning Vietnamese. I was there for a week. All I could ever say was thank you. Like, actually, you need to do a fair amount of work before you get to the country in order that you can take advantage of being there yeah. and, and then use that, that as an opportunity to catapult your language up to a new level. I agree entirely. There's definitely a, a preparatory phase, phase before you arrive in the country where you need to be able to play out the most common scenarios, get that basic vocabulary down. Exactly. And, and that's just going to then, as you say, catapult is a nice word to use to describe how it will accelerate your, your learning experience and also what the value you get out of the trips. Showing up here, I mean, it's a lot of discussion about language immersion. And I remember when I was younger, for example, my parents sent me to, Fr to France to be immersed in the language. Um, well, I didn't speak any French when I arrived, so it was pretty difficult. It was like a huge culture shock. Right. I didn't understand anything. Even dealing with normal day, everyday situations were just too were overwhelming. So coming prepared, just even just a basic amount that it allows you to then enjoy the trip more and to accelerate your language learning is vital. Absolutely. I mean, and and uh, I mean, my own approach is to go well beyond just a few phrases. Like yeah. I'll put a lot of effort into building up my vocabulary. But I also wanted to say, as much as I like Ukraine and I've, I, I love it, it's a, a great t uh, country, very yeah. interesting. There are lots of countries in the world, <laughs> lots of cultures in the world. And, and, and we have this opportunity today with, with travel, with the internet, we have this opportunity to go in and uh, discover lots of different languages and cultures. And wherever you do go, I think this fourth dimension, the language, just enhances the, you know, the, the, just the enjoyment that you can get from the trip. So it needn't be Ukrainian, it can be Swahili, it can be Gaelic in Ireland, yeah, can, course, I don't yeah. know, whatever. Well, that's not going to give you too many trouble opportunities, <laughs> to be honest. That's going to be just a couple of regions, whatever, but it will definitely Ukraine. transform whatever. your experience yeah, there, exactly. of course. If you're a um, Canadian and you show up, you can speak Irish. I mean, even it presses me. And it's on my yeah, first especially life. if you have no Irish roots. Yeah, on top of it, <laughs> for, for sure. So. This preparatory phase is, I think, vital for getting the most out of your, your travel experiences. And actually, that's why I designed a free training course 
uh, right. people, people have to be on my, my mailing list. There's a link below. It's completely free. And uh, you'll then receive my free training course where I give you this kind of guide, where I will present this guidance and the preparatory steps that uh, you need to get the most out of uh, learning a language uh, for traveling and then doing this preparatory stage and showing up with the right mindset and language skills to survive. I would like to ask you, because we've known each other yeah. for quite a while and I know that you travel and your passion is, is languages and helping people learn languages. So let me ask you, just what exactly is this preparatory course? Talk yeah. a bit about it. So what, I'm, what I've been working on is a like step-by-step -step guide. Learn the basics of the language that will help you not to avoid being lost on your trip and frustrated, uh, stressed when you arrive. And then when you're on the trip, you'll be able to then accelerate that language learning and get the most out of it in terms of, uh, of being in the country. Because a lot of complaints that people make is that they show up and then the locals maybe reply to them in English, maybe they're in a tourist place, all that. That's just one part of it. What's even more, I think, valuable uh, in, these course, in, in this course will be how to have a travel experience that's close to being a local as possible, mm -hmm. right? So language yeah. is one element. You talk about a right. fourth dimension, right. but also it's being able to find the best places. It's like avoiding being scammed, staying safe, um, you know, making friends, making contacts with local people, really understanding the culture and getting the most out of it. I mean, no one really uh, enjoys, well, definitely no one enjoys being ripped off, right? No. That's something that happens a lot to tourists. I think people who are uh, it, who are informed travelers and try to get in touch with local culture, they get, they, it saves them a lot of money, first of all, because they get cheaper prices. That's just like... And I know that you've been very successful at doing that in yep. some strange countries. No, I shouldn't say strange, but countries that <laughs> travel to less often. Like so, in Ukraine, like and, Ukraine exactly. and Romania, so, Brazil, and, and other places, Belarus. Uh, but what, so I think you're a very good source yeah. of information because it comes from your own personal experience. But what format is this going to take? Is this a series of videos? Is it books, uh, audio CDs? What exactly is it going to be? It's going to be a video series. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will have some exercises to help reinforce the training right. um, at the end of each uh, each module. And it will have be accompanied by text, but primarily it's a video training course. Right. And it will take you yeah, through all the steps to be able to, you know, travel, learn the languages beforehand in preparation, get the most out of your experience while you're there. And that, this, it's a really nice way you phrase it as a fourth dimension, right. Steve. By the way, Steve is wearing uh, Vichy Banca. Yes. I should explain what this is, right? Well, today, uh, unfortunately, we got some competition here. But today is Constitution Day in Ukraine, which is the celebration of their... Now, I understand that the first Ukrainian constitution was written in 1704 or something. Uh, so, people are celebrating, so I figured I would wear my Ukrainian shirt. So, Steve, it's been cool to hang out again uh, in other country yes, to add nice to the to collection. We'll have to do this again yeah. somewhere else. Duja Jaku and uh, Dopobachin, everybody. Dopobachin, Lviv. Goodbye, Dopobachin, yeah. From Lviv in Ukraine.